welcome back to the Lumios Post where we talk about all things Pokemon. Today, we're going to be talking about Pokemon Day, which is really just around the corner. And it, specifically, we're going to be talking about a Pokemon Direct because I, I do think that we're going to get a Pokemon Direct or Pokemon Presents as they're now called on Pokemon Day. I, it, it just makes sense. There's so many things that like we kind of know is coming. So, yeah, but on that note, we're going to drop today our predictions for this Pokemon Presents on Pokemon Day, what we think we could see here, because I, I do think there is some really, really interesting stuff that we might see in this direct, which, uh, let's just get into it. So, first off, it goes without saying, they're going to announce some updates for, uh, you know, just their kind of spin-off uh, and mobile games that they have. There's going to be announcements for Pokemon Go, I'm sure. There's going to be some kind of special event or something going on. Maybe they'll announce a community day. Maybe even they will announce the roaming form Gimme Ghoul coming into Pokemon Go, or rather being catchable in Pokemon Go. So, you know, Gimme Ghoul is one of the new Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet, and we actually last year... We met Gimme Ghoul by first seeing it in Pokemon Go, and uh, basically they confirmed that at some point in 2023, they're going to do an event where you will be able to catch roaming form Gimme Ghoul in Pokemon Go and be able to transfer it into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I, I don't think they said you'll be able to transfer it in Scarlet and Violet, but it's clearly going to be the way you're able to get that form in Scarlet and Violet, because in Scarlet and Violet, the roaming form Gimme Ghouls do not... Uh, activate a battle. They can't be captured. You can only get the chest form Gimme Ghoul. So Go will give us access to this roaming form Gimme Ghoul. I imagine that they will go ahead and announce the date for that. Like they'll go ahead and say, hey, Gimme Ghoul uh, will be popping up in March. So be sure to look at that. Or, you know, what will be really cool, but I'm not necessarily banking on, is if they were like, hey, you know, when this presentation is over, pull up your Pokemon Go game because they're there might be some gimme ghouls roaming around. That that would be really, really neat. But again, I don't think they'd do that. I think they'd wait a little bit because, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have to have a Pokemon home compatibility probably before they would make Go able to send a gimme ghoul into Scarlet and Violet. That just makes sense to me because there's currently no way for Go to connect to Scarlet and Violet. It would have to be through home. So that is what I'd imagine, but regardless, we'll get that announcement for Go. In my opinion, we will get an announcement of the Roaming Form Gimme Ghoul event. Then I do think we'll get an announcement for some kind of event for Cafe Remix. Who knows, maybe Quaxley, Sprigatito, and Flicoco will appear in the game. I I'm not big on Cafe Remix. I've, I've never touched it, but, you know, to you Cafe Remix fans, there'll probably be something. Uh, Master ZX, I'm, I'm certain there'll be something. What would be really neat is if Master ZX got their first Paldea character, too. I'm trying to think of what are kind of the most popular ones. I, I feel like Nimona is an obvious choice, but they might even would just do uh, Florio or... Uh, is that the name of the character? I immediately said it and think it's wrong. Whatever the player characters are in Scarlet and Violet, they, they might do them. I can see them doing Nimona, Arvin, Penny any of them really but either way I, I could see them doing that for masters ex and that that would be pretty cool i think people would be pretty excited about that then of course pokemon unite that is kind of a, a big game for uh, pokemon you know what with its own uh championship bracket and everything so unite will get an announcement for sure i'm i'm certain that it'll get some kind of new pokemon coming onto the game so that's that's gonna be a lot of fun then we're going to get into the meat of this presentation. You know, obviously there's many Pokemon fans such as myself that would not be satisfied with just that. So first off, I do think that they will announce the uh, release date for home compatibility with Scarlet and Violet. You know, we are really looking forward to home compatibility for Scarlet and Violet because that means that uh, when that comes, we're going to be able to get you know, the Hisui Pokemon. And then there's other Pokemon we get access to, like uh, the Kalos starters. So if you didn't get Greninja from the recent raid event, you can get one now. And the Battle Bond Greninja, which is no longer Ash Greninja, that's a whole thing. Then you have access to all of the Hisui starters and their, like, regular counterparts. So Hisui and Samurai and Unovan, etc., etc. Uh, tons of Sinnoh Pokemon, regional variants. It's a very highly anticipated thing so i do think that they will announce when the release date will be i do not think we will get home 
on Pokemon Day. Uh, there's I've seen some people kind of speculate that. I really highly doubt that. It, it said uh, when they first talked about home back last year, they said that compatibility would come for it in 2023 spring. Well, you know, Pokemon Day isn't exactly the spring, but I do think it could come late March. Uh, that just makes sense because the way they do the uh, VGC series rule sets is they last two months. So the first one was, you know, December and January. And then this next one is going to be from uh, February. It started this month and will end in uh, March. And this current one does not allow the use of Pokemon outside of the Paldea decks, which means that Greninja is unavailable for use, Cinderace is unavailable for use, and Charizard is unavailable for use. Those are the ones that we've been able to get from the Terra Raids that are otherwise only home compatible. And uh, I think that end of March, we'll get access to the Hisui Mons, all the other home compatible Mons, and then, of course, the rule set in April will allow for them to be used in uh, ranked VGC all that fun stuff. That's that's just my personal opinion on the matter. Uh, then I do think that we will get an announcement of the patch. We know that there's a patch coming to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that's supposed to really fix up the game and add some uh, functionality, it says. And I think that'll be dropping on Pokemon Day because it said late February, so it just makes sense to be like, also, a patch is available for your game after this presentation. You know, the very common presentation practice uh, in Nintendo Directs, Pokemon Presents, very common thing to do. So I do think they will do that, and I do have more to say on that a little bit later, but let's go into the next big thing, which is I think that we will see Game Boy games coming to a uh, Switch. You know, we did see that Game Boy games are coming to the Switch. Uh, you know, uh, in the recent Nintendo Direct, they announced Link's Awakening. Uh, that's the one I've really been binging. So to be honest, I don't remember the others top off the top of my head. And they did say more Game Boy games would be coming down the road. Well, one thing that fans really, really want to see is Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, uh, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Emerald, Ruby, Sapphire, Crystal, Gold, Silver, somewhere. And the fact of the matter is that these games are uh, currently only available on the 3DS. Like, you can download them. But in March, the 3DS eShop will close, so you won't have access to those games anymore. So it just makes sense that Pokemon would make them available via virtual console. And there's been some kind of uh, leaked, rather data mined information that suggests that Pokemon is working on a kind of system for having their games on virtual console, which is just huge. So I do think we'll get the announcement of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald coming to uh, the Game Boy system um, on the Nintendo Switch. On Pokemon Day, I do, and I think it could even be a after this presentation, they'll be available thing. That would be super, super insane, and man, that'd be a dream come true uh, for me personally. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd think of this, and uh, which game, if they dropped all the Game Boy games, gyms one through three, which one would you be picking up first? I'm, I'm very curious to know. Then we get into the uh, nice little, little lava cake of this multi-course meal and that is information on the future of scarlet and violet specifically dlc i do firmly believe they will be announcing dlc for pokemon scarlet and violet uh, we pretty much know it's coming i mean come on we've gotten hints to straight up pokemon that are going to be a part of this dlc we've seen pictures of them so they're coming they're going to announce the DLC, in, in my opinion. They're going to give a really nice trailer, so that will be fun because we'll see, you know, uh, in-game footage of, or rather the in-game art or official art of the paradoxes of the Legendary Beast and Swords of Justice. We'll probably get to see the third Legendary, uh, maybe even another Pokemon, you know, uh, multiple other Pokemon. We could see our Galarian Slowpoke, like a regional form, or maybe it might even be a Convergent Mon that's going to kind of be the poster child of the DLC. And we are also going to very likely get the reveal of like a cub food type mon you know that's a mon that you get at the beginning of dlc is kind of going to be journeying with you they know that new pokemon is the best way to sell something so they're, they're going to show new ones for sure and I, I do think we'll see new ones 
outside of the new ones we know about. Again, that being the Legendary Beast Paradox, the Legendary uh, Sword of Justice Paradox, and the uh, third Legendary that we know is coming. I think that we'll see more than just that. I then think, going back to that update, that update lists bugs fixes, but it also says added functionality, which is like more functions in the game. What on earth could that be? Well, I think that what this is going to be is it's going to be some kind of tease to DLC that you'll go ahead and be able to do in your game. I don't know if you remember, but back when Sword and Shield's DLC was announced, they revealed that, hey, update your game after this for a little surprise at the uh, Wedgehurst train station. And sure enough, if you went to the Wedgehurst train station, you would meet Clara or Avery, depending on the version of your game. You would see a Galarian Slowpoke, you'd get Isle of Armor mentioned, and you would even be able to catch the Galarian Slowpoke, which was a lot of fun because it got a lot of people able to just go ahead and shiny hunt for this Galarian Slowpoke. That way, when Isle of Armor started, they could bring in their shiny Galarian Slowpoke to evolve into their shiny Galarian Slowbro, which is just really cool. And then now with ability patches, you can go ahead and get you a hidden ability one. It's just a, a great way to really uh, tease up that DLC and get people excited for it and feel like they're able to interact with the DLC before it even releases. I do not know if it'll be one or two part DLC. I'm gonna be real. I think there's a very decent chance that instead of giving us two parts, an Isle of Armor and a Crown Tundra, they just give us one really big DLC with very important story elements, kind of closing off the Scarlet and Violet story by addressing uh, what the paradoxes are, what this third legendary has to do with it, a deeper dive into Area Zero. And I do think that... Uh, it could just be a big area with, you know, 200 Pokemon returning instead of 100 and then another batch of 100. And I, I think that that's very possible. I don't want that to be the case because then I feel like we'll have to wait later for it. Like it probably won't come out till the fall. And I'd much rather a summer release of something and then a fall release of something. But I, I don't know what they have planned. Let me know in the comments below if you think it'll be a one-part DLC or a two-part DLC and uh, which would you prefer? I, I can't imagine someone preferring just one part, but maybe maybe it would. If you want to see the kind of stuff that I'm hoping we see in DLC, you can check out this video right here. But yeah, again, let me know in the comments below what you think of all this. Let me know your predictions on what we might see on a Pokemon Presents on Pokemon Day. And be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications because when Pokemon Day comes and we get that what I feel is inevitable Pokemon Presents... We're going to be covering the stuff that's in it, and you don't want to miss that. So until next time, I will see all of you later.